always in millimetres. Did you say 2,334? That's all. 2,324? Yeah, if it's always millimetres. That's isn't it? I've got a few hours spare on the Sunday afternoon to get a bit of framing done. So Joe and I pop down to the farm. We are going to hopefully get maybe halfway along podge, podge and podge. That's what we've gone for. So this side here is, it's pretty busy that sketch, but you can see that we've got three windows, which are the three girls bedrooms. 400 mil centers all the way along until we pretty much get up to the front door. So we're all set, we're all ready to go. Completely rained off yesterday, so we spent, I don't know, an hour or so in the workshop cutting all the other studs to length. Kind of basic framing, but just to give you a little insight into what I'm doing here. So I've measured along, we kind of covered it on that side. Measured along for my very first stud, my second one. My measurement is not 400 from here, it's 400 to the center. And then once we've got this one in, then we can simply mark, hook the tape on here, measure every 400 all the way along, and just make sure that we put an X the right side of the line. So we're always just putting the stud beyond the line. That's how I work anyway. So I'm gonna put these in roughly. They're all pretty good. Just making sure they're up the same way. Is that not, did it? So there's definitely a few places where I would change our plan of attack. One is build the wall the right way up. We've just got in the habit of building facing that way. So we've actually done this one the other, other way around. So we're just gonna need to spin it or flip it. I'm not trying to do that myself now. What I really could have done is because our windows, half of them 
are the same size. All of these components, you know, the, the studs underneath the windows, the sills, the timbers across the top, although not, they're not lintels, you know, that section, all of those are standard sizes. So I could have had Joe on a chop saw cutting all those in batches. That might have made sense because all of these are, they should be exactly the same. And actually, if you cut them in a batch, you know that things, just the way things slot together, things should end up square. So now I've got these two short studs underneath the sill. I'll then come in now and put in two on an angle. And by making sure that these ones are in first, it means this won't knock down off square too much. And if it does, we can tap it back a little bit. Right, we're going to take a break from doing our side walls simply because we need some more of the 4.8 meter lengths. So it, we'll park all those against the wall. We've only done a few on this side. And we're going to make a start on our joining walls, which is basically the hallway which joins both cabins together, or both halves of the cabins together. Shall I pull it towards me? Oh no, I can't. Hang on. Watch your fingers. Watch your paws. Everyone, and the nose of the dog. Woo! Maybe we should have gone 600 centimeters. That's a heavy wall. So we do have plenty of 63 mil, but in 4.8 meter length. So we can. That's why we're making a start on these uh, hallway walls. Most of these are pretty straight. We do need to be quite fussy with how straight these are because obviously a wall and a wall, we want them to join nicely. We've got two identical walls that will get paired together with door openings and all sorts in them. So we're going to build them on top of each other. So they're complete, perfect um, kind of mirror image, butterfly style. So it's time for a quick production line. It worked two at a time last time. Yeah. So in our last batch that we cut that are down here, that was just a rainy day job. Uh, Joe was bringing in two at a time and that was about the right pace. We still got the stop block clamps on the end there, so I think we're good to go. Once we've tied it up all this hardware. Right, half the job, but at least we've got enough space. After all that, I think we've run out. Uh, I don't know quite what's happened with that because we were working on 400 sensors. I've used a bunch of them for other jobs around the farm, so maybe I've used too many. In the same way we did the last, we're working off a laptop just because we have no printer, it's all in storage. Right, we've made the decision to go with 600 sensors for this center wall, it's fine. All it's carrying is plasterboard, the roof trusses are really light. We're gonna have a double wall plate up top anyway, and the sensors of the trusses might even fall on the studs. So no reason why we can't go with 600 and we can use less timber. Two, three, two, four. From the end of the wall. Two. 232 
centimeters. You've got 200, you, you change all the time. 2324. Yeah, Always but in millimeters. Did you say 2334? That's all. 2324? Yeah, if it's always millimetres. Numbers, isn't it? Yeah, but it's still. What is 2324? No, it's, two, three, not. Two, it's four. really hard to work out. 232. 2. 4. Yeah? Yeah. So I wouldn't even call that a 4. That's a point 0.4. Why not? But if it's 2000, not if you're working in millimetres. Yeah, exactly. Always in millimetres. It's 2000, though, isn't it? It's not 2. Three, two, yeah, four. but what's 2,324 in numbers? Yeah, but you say it like it is, otherwise I'm then thinking, what does he mean? 223 centimetres. All right, always millimetres now, 2324. Right, mark that. 2,300. I'll give over. Done it, marked it. Okay, and then the same, so that's our last, we need to put a bonus stud in there. But Which way, this way? No, on the other side. This side. So there's one here. So that, that replaces that one. So we need two here. I think the next thing we should do, rather than carry on, we'll frame in this door and then we'll build the other one on top of it. Cool. Right, just working out our door. Because this is a structural wall, well, it is a structural wall, uh, we need to make sure that the door has got a bit of strength, a bit more strength than the standard stud wall where you just put a stud either side and a lining in between. So that's why we've got a stud, two studs either side and a bit of strength above it. So we need to cut them down. I'll cut them down at two meters, which gives about 204 minus the lining on a 1981 door, I think that's about right. Again, with a bit of uh, forward planning, we could cut these down, because we've got a whole bunch of internal doors all within this wall. So these, are, I'm cutting down to exactly two meters. We could have done that in the workshop as well. Cool, so we've got our center wall number one done for Podge. So we need to do the same one for this wall. We'll just build it on top. Basically means we end up with a 120, well, 130 mil thick wall in the middle. So we do lose a little bit of floor space, but there's no way around it. We couldn't go any thinner than this, although I have seen a few cabins that kind of use 50 mil studs in the middle. Of course, when they're joined together, it's 100 mil, but I think this is, because our roof is gonna be sitting on it, it makes sense to make it half decent. So we've got our main stud. And then we do have another stud, a bit like the windows on the outside, just to carry a little bit of weight above the door. Probably not necessary. But the reason we've got three over here is because we've got an internal wall that comes off just inside the door as you go through on the right. And the reason why we need two is just so we can then, we'll probably end up putting another stud at 90 degrees here so we can catch the plasterboard, but we need something to anchor this wall that comes off at 90. But for now, it's like tracing paper, we just need to lie everything loose on top of this and we can just transfer all the markings and bang, bang, bang. Imagine this wall stood up, this bottom one will be stood on this edge, the other one will be stood 
on this edge and when the buildings join together we will bolt it in a few different places probably behind the door linings perhaps uh, just so we can tie it together the floors are bolted together and the roof will be bolted together every bit needs to be translated onto the other wall. For instance, we don't have an internal wall coming off on this one, uh, or I don't think we do at least. So we don't need one there, but we might need one somewhere else where another wall comes off. It's another day, another wet, miserable day, but we're gonna carry on because, well, Thursday means childcare. Grandma's got Rosa, so two of us on the job. We're just building a panel at a time. These are the end gable ends. They're three meters, so we can easily uh, handle them and we'll build them in here, take them out when we're done. So we're building this, well, it's two halves. So we know we're three meters from the mid center of our building across to the corner. So we just need to come off 89 mil, which will give us the length of that plate. Same at the top, frame it out. Boss slash apprentice is here. <laughs> Are you kind of best of both? What's that? These are glasses. Oh, you haven't got a patch on your hat. Oh no! I, I, I there's two in the front seat, and I picked up the wrong one. Framing under a roof today. Or are you start? Are you uh, sporting a new hat? Then? I know. Although, have you seen the weather? It's been horrible. Yeah, no. That's why we're inside. Oh yeah, I know. But look, sun hats. Oh look. Yeah, but it keeps the rain off your face. Yeah. Two more timbers to go, and then this wall is done. Right, the wall is up. There's no point in taking it outside yet, because may as well keep it in the dry. But I've just had a thought. We've got another one of these to build. Exactly the same, but no window. So just like we did when we did the duplicate kind of mirror image frames outside, I think we should lie this back down again and just build the new one on top and just use this as a jig. Got it? Yeah. So we need two long ones out of the Dutch barn. The new ones that just arrived. So this is the width of our insulation. Here to here is good for insulation, but we'll end up with a little pocket behind. So when we insulate, we need to stuff behind. But then we'll have the wood fiber insulation on the outside anyway. Right, we're back outside. We're working on our middle 
hallway wall now. So we're gonna build, like we did last time, and inside, build this one, sit the other one on top, just a mirror image. We've got four doors to get done. Joe's on marking. Yes. Are those all cut? No, not yet. I'm ready. Uh, I need to just get the set square. Next decision we need to make, we will carry on with the framing, but we need to decide on noggins because the outside walls don't need it. For one, they're at 400 sensors. They're also going to be completely sheathed in OSB. So I'm happy to go ahead and, you know, and they're going to be counterbands. Nothing's going to change there. Whereas these ones, I think, being that they're 600, it might pay to just put one down the middle of all, all of them. Either staggered or in a line, doesn't really matter. So we'll cut those. I think most of them are going to be regular. But there'll be a couple of small little blocks to put in. We're trying to use up the waste because we are running tight, but I think we've just about got enough. Really good use of waste for these. Lovely. Um, well, above the doors. Yeah, but saying that. So those ones are over there are perfectly 273. Uh, 272. Yeah. So these are cut up to 272. This gap is 274. Can you measure up these? Yeah. We need to do the whole thing again. Countdown's on. We've got 25 minutes yeah. until we need to leave, or until Joe needs to leave. So we're going to see if we can frame up the whole second wall. So like we did before. Two, three, one. Yeah. Bottom one's on. These are on. So if you can bring down, that's a really wonky surge, that okay. one. Can you can you bring down the last few long lengths? Or I can come and help. It's just trying to explain to Joe. We need to allow for a double timber on top. And that's the full height of our wall, and that's everywhere, it's including the internal walls. So, or, or the centre walls. So if we, if we work through everything we already got up here, we won't need the top plate until... We won't need the extra wall plate until the walls are up, so we can always order them for next week. Or whenever we're going to raise the frame. Yeah, we're learning a lot on this job, aren't we, Tim? We are. <laughs> I'm actually tacking them together. I don't think they're going to budge otherwise. I'll nail this one first and then we need a stud in there. Yeah, well, you need to cut them off first. They're all measured out ready. Looks like we've got a friend. Right, ben. It's like Peter Rabbit here at the moment. Okay, let me show you. How we getting on? Because we are almost there. Got to frame the top of this door still. All the other ones are done, minus a couple of little timbers in the top. As you come along here, this is a little WC we've decided to put in in the hallway. At this point, an internal wall comes off for a kitchen. I will do an overview video, I promise. Which leaves this sort of projecting stub wall that sticks out into the kitchen, which is basically the end of the cabinets. Now I've put a central stud in here and then at the end is where a six and a half metre long beam is going to free span between our gable end and the top of here. Now we've decided, or Joe's just decided, that rather than trying to carry this wall on, remember our glue land beams are 90 mil thick so we would actually want to be jumping up to 89 mil CLS. There was no natural point along this wall to jump up without creating a weak spot and twisting, if that makes sense. So if you were to look down on it, we've got a beam or a double beam, one on each cabin. 
they need to sit on the, the wall that runs down the whole of the cabin. Now this wall is thinner than the beams, so we'd have to jump up to a thicker wall to make sure they're bearing on it properly. But if I just change the last few studs, we'd have this join here. Even if, I mean, the other option is to, to run a sheet of OSB or ply over to really give that strength to the wall. Otherwise, this bit here would potentially be a weak spot. The beam comes to here, measured from the end of the cabin. So at the moment, they'd be bearing on this much, which is probably okay, because that's what they're gonna be bearing on on the outside wall. But in addition to that, we decided that we'll put extra studs in here, but we're gonna have a feature post. We've got a load of Douglas fir beams and posts, of course, stacked in the barn. So I think we could do a bit of a timber frame style, so when you come in, you'll see, Oh, let me show you on the computer. Come through this front door, you'll see that short section of wall in front, which will be where the glue and beam, which is up there at the top. This is terrible, guys, I'm sorry. You can see up here, this will be supported. We'll run those studs longer. But up here, we'll have a post, a feature post. So you'll come in and you'll see a post up here. Maybe use some proper steel fix, timber frame fixings um, spliced into there. So I'm gonna get on and finish this. So today we have framed up the end wall for that trailer, Hodge. Hodge has its end wall done. They're all framed up, left them in the barn. We've done the whole kind of party wall between the two, which runs all the way down, becomes the left-hand side of the hallway. And now we've got our delivery that arrived today of more 4.8 meter lengths of CLS, of the 89 mil CLS, so we can get on and build that east wall all the walls are then done, apart from the very last one, which is the gable end up there. We just need to frame all of that in and then we will build up to our apex because at the moment we need to decide where that beam is going to go. Really, I need to get the trusses in first, work out what height I need the ridge beam because it's all well and good trusting a computer, but I'd rather see it in person. Huge thank you to everyone over on Patreon. You've been seeing sneak peeks of this going on. Thanks to everyone following us on Instagram. And of course, a very special thank you to Speedy, who are helping to support this uh, cabin build series behind the scenes. Just means that we can dedicate all of our time and efforts into going into this and filming videos like this. So you guys get the most out of this as well. So Joe's gonna tell me off if I don't mention it. The hat, we've got two different hats. We've got the one. Joe's gonna tell me off if I don't mention it. The two new hats will be also on the website either now or very shortly. There's the embroidered IYC DIY and also the leather patch that Joe's made up and got sewn on. So thank you to Joe for getting all that sorted. I'm terrible at it. We've also got mugs coming soon. <laughs> and sausages if these guys don't shut up. Thanks for watching. Remember, if you can, do it yourself and we'll see you next time.